Mission Impossible followed a covert team of government operatives dubbed the Impossible Missions Force, leading us through their escapades and tactics in outmaneuvering and toppling Iron Curtain regimes, authoritarian rulers in the developing world, and more. This marked the genesis of the mission, Impossible Saga, evolving with fresh faces and a succession of blockbuster movies starring Tom Cruise, which diverged significantly from the original Mission Impossible cast. But we'll delve into that, including the reasons behind the replacement of Mr. Briggs after the inaugural season. Your task, should you opt to undertake it, is to revisit the ensemble of Mission Impossible. Fear not, though. This recording will not spontaneously combust in five seconds. Brace yourselves, because what lies ahead may astonish you. The passage of time has been less than forgiving to some of our beloved operatives. Greg Morris as Barney Collier. Barney was renowned as the go-to expert in mechanics and electronics. And Greg Morris held the distinction of being one of only two actors to feature in every season. Therefore, his departure from the 96 film premiere carried significant weight, especially when he stood up halfway through and exited the venue. Turns out, depicting Jim Phelps as the antagonist, wasn't the wisest choice, huh? He described it as an atrocity. Ouch. Greg Morris commenced his Hollywood career in 1963, but he is most recognized for his portrayal of Barney. His second notable role was likely Latent David Nelson in the detective series Vega. He cherished his time filming there so much that he and his spouse decided to relocate permanently. When the series underwent a revival in 1988, his son Phil Morris was cast as Barney's offspring, Grant, and Greg made guest appearances thrice. Acting runs in the family, as not only his son, but also his daughter Iona pursued careers in acting and voice acting. A lifelong smoker, he received a diagnosis of lung cancer in 1990 and valiantly battled the illness for six years until his demise at the age of 62 in his Las Vegas residence. Peter Graves as James Phelps Jim Phelps serves as the chief among the IMF operatives, holding the pivotal position of authority. The series essentially revolves around the art of outsmarting adversaries, relying on intellect rather than physical prowess. Few individuals exemplify these attributes as adeptly as Phelps. Following a stint of two years in the Air Force, Peter Graves pursued a degree in drama at the University of Minnesota before venturing into Hollywood, where he swiftly secured a prominent role in the 1951 film Rogue River. One of his notable early film credits includes the 1953 World War II drama, Stalag 17. Two years later, he assumed the lead role in the television series Fury, portraying a man, not the equine or the youth. By 1967, Graves was enlisted by Desilu Studios, the brainchild of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, to supplant Stephen Hill as the principal actor in the ensemble of Mission Impossible. Adding a touch of levity to Peter Graves' repertoire are his roles in two iconic farcical comedies. We have clearance, Clarence. Graves declined to reprise his portrayal of Jim Phelps in the initial 1996 cinematic adaptation, following the character's depiction as a turncoat and antagonist, portrayed at the time by John Voight. This plot twist was vehemently criticized by ardent fans of the series including its original actors. Besides Airplane and Mission Impossible, Peter left his mark in the realm of Westerns. Interestingly, talent runs in the family, as his elder sibling is none other than James Arnes, renowned for his portrayal in the esteemed Gunsmoke series. Although Peter and James never shared the screen, Peter directed his brother in the episode Gunsmoke, Witch Doctor, in 1966. In 2010, Peter succumbed to a sudden heart attack, collapsing just four days shy of his 84th birthday. Leonard Nimoy as Paris. Paris, affectionately dubbed as The Magnificent Paris, showcased his talents as an actor, illusionist, and expert in disguise. Hence, he stepped in to fill the void left by Martin Landau. By this juncture, he had already embodied the character of Spock, 
and even ventured into music under the guise of Spock, making his addition to the mission, Impossible Ensemble, a significant boon in compensating for the absence of Rollin Hand and Cinnamon Carter. Between 1982 and 1987, Nimoy served as the host of the educational children's program, Stand By, Lights, Camera, Action, on Nickelodeon. Additionally, he lent his voice to the Ancient Mysteries series aired on A&E. Beyond his acting pursuits, Leonard delved into photography, filmmaking, literature, and music, not to mention his fondness for animals. The esteemed performer even owned a pet emporium in California during the 1960s. Renowned for his prowess in capturing monochromatic images, his photographic works were truly remarkable. Leonard Nimoy passed away in February 2015, just a month shy of his 84th birthday. His final social media post, shared four days prior, conveyed, A life is akin to a garden. Though perfect moments may arise, they cannot be preserved, save for in memory. Ellap, live long and prosper. Peter Lupus as Willie Armitage. Willie earned acclaim as a weightlifting champion, renowned as the brawn of the Impossible Missions Force, a role that resonated closely with the actor portraying him. Lupus commenced his career by clinching titles such as Mr. Indianapolis, Mr. Indiana, Mr. Hercules, and Mr. International Health Physique, boasting a towering stature of six feet four inches. His versatility shone through in various roles, including portraying a pugilist with a fragile chin on the Joey Bishop show and embodying a primitive man in an episode of Fantasy Island. Lupus also made headlines as one of the pioneering male actors to pose Au Naturel for Playgirl's Man of the Month in April of 1974. In a remarkable feat of strength, Lupus, at the age of 75 in 2007, set a world record for weightlifting endurance, hoisting a staggering 77,560 pounds over a duration of 24 minutes and 5 seconds. Additionally, he holds the Guinness World Record as the oldest individual to bench press over 300 pounds. At present, he celebrates 91 years of age and has been united in matrimony with his wife Sharon, a fitness advisor, since 1960. Initially, they kept their marital union clandestine due to the inundation of fan mail that Peter received from admirers worldwide. Stephen Hill as Daniel Briggs Daniel Dan Briggs played a pivotal role as the team's leader. He received directives from the voice on tape and meticulously curated and orchestrated the ideal team members for each mission. The ensemble typically comprised Cinnamon Carter, Willie Armitage, Barney Collier, and Rollin Hand, although Briggs occasionally opted for alternative agents instead of utilizing the entire team. In 1947, Hill was selected alongside Brando, Montgomery Clift, and Julie Harris, among others, from a pool of approximately 700 applicants, to join the newly established Actors Studio. Making his cinematic debut in 1950 with A Lady Without Passport, Hill temporarily returned to the Navy in 1952 for a two-year service before resuming his acting career earnestly. Strasberg later hailed him as one of the preeminent actors ever produced by America. Hill actively sought roles imbued with social significance during his early acting endeavors. Hill tied the knot with his first spouse, Selma Stern, in 1951, and they welcomed four children before their divorce in 1964. He entered into matrimony once more with Rachel Schenker in 1967, with whom he had five children. For many years, he called Monsey, New York, his home. Hill succumbed to cancer in a New York medical facility on August 23, 2016, at the age of 94. Leslie Ann Warren as Dana Lambert. Dana Lambert assumed the role of the sole female regular member of the IMF during the fifth season, earning placement in the opening credits. She marked the first female IMF member to receive regular billing following the departure of Cinnamon Carter at the conclusion of season three. Warren commenced her ballet training at 14 years old, enrolling in the School of American Ballet in 1961. The subsequent year, she recorded herself performing the Queen of the Night aria from The Magic Flute, her sole foray into opera singing. 
At 17, she gained admission to the actor's studio, purportedly the youngest applicant ever accepted. Her Broadway premiere occurred in 1963 with the musical 110 in the shade. Notably, she clinched the Theater World Award for her portrayal in the 1965 musical Misfire, Drat the Cat. In 2021, Warren made a guest appearance in an episode of the legal drama series All Rise on CBS. The subsequent year, she assumed a recurring role in the crime thriller streaming series Panhandle and secured a prominent part in the indie film It Snows All the Time. Warren exchanged vows with producer John Peters in 1967, parting ways in 1975 after a two-year separation. They share a son, Christopher Peters. From 1977 to 1985, she cohabitated with choreographer Jeffrey Hornaday. Her romantic affiliations also included brief dalliances with producer Robert Evans, saxophonist David Sanborn, vocalists Bobby Darren and Paul Stanley, and actors Scott Bio. Robert Blake, Val Kilmer, and John Strasberg. Since 2000, Warren has been happily married to advertising executive Ron Taft, whom she encountered at a hairstyling salon in 1991, Martin Landau as Roland Hand. Roland Hand was renowned as an actor, illusionist, and expert of disguises, dubbing himself as the man of a million faces and the world's greatest impersonator. Make up your mind, Roland. His tenure was confined to the initial trio of seasons due to Martin's overwhelming demand. He excelled as a remarkably skilled character performer, not only on the silver screen and television, but also on the theatrical stage, prompting him to ink a five-year agreement to accommodate his commitments in the New York theater circuit. After vying for a spot at the actor's studio in 1955, Marty and Steve McQueen were the lone candidates chosen from a pool of 500 applicants. He marked his cinematic debut with a significant role in Alfred Hitchcock's timeless masterpiece North by Northwest in 1959. Landau secured notable parts in two epic productions, Cleopatra in 1963 and The Greatest Story Ever Told in 65. Additionally, he shared the screen with his former schoolmate Steve McQueen in Nevada Smith during the same year. In 1989, Landau garnered an Oscar nomination for Woody Allen's Crimes and Misdemeanors, albeit ultimately losing to Denzel Washington in glory. Nevertheless, he clinched the Oscar for his portrayal in Ed Wood in 1994. Landau's expertise extended beyond acting. He mentored several renowned performers, including Jack Nicholson and Angelica Houston. One of his final on-screen appearances was in 2015, co-starring with Christopher Plummer in the critically acclaimed feature Remember. Regrettably, Martin Landau passed away in July of 2017 at the age of 89, yet his daughters are carrying forward his legacy by venturing into the entertainment realm, an unsurprising decision given their father's stature as Martin, coupled with their mother's prominence as the following actress, Barbara Anderson as Mimi Davis. Mimi Davis embarked on her inaugural assignment with the IMF during the maiden-aired mission of season seven. Portraying a former convict striving for sobriety, she was enlisted to ingratiate herself with an ex-paramour targeted in the mission. Following the triumphant completion of this operation, she was absolved of her parole obligations and offered a recurring position within the IMF, filling in for Casey, who was engaged in a protracted assignment in Europe. Anderson opted for a relocation to Los Angeles. In 1966, she made one of her earliest television appearances in a debut season episode of Star Trek titled The Conscience of the King. Introducing her character Eve Whitfield in the March 1967 Ironside television movie, she reprised this role when the series premiered in September. Concurrently, she featured prominently in the inaugural episode of the television series Mannix that same September. Anderson sustained her acting career, accepting supporting roles in numerous television films, including 1977's You Lie So Deep, My Love, where she reunited with former Ironside colleague Don Galloway. Additionally, she made guest appearances on popular television programs of the era, including The Love Boat, 
Wonder Woman, and Marcus Welby, M.D. In 1993, Anderson reunited with her former Ironside cohorts for the television movie Return of Ironside, reprising her role as Eve Whitfield, now a mother. In 1971, Anderson exchanged vows with actor Don Burnett and departed from the Ironside television series to focus on her marital commitments. Lee Merriweather as Tracy. Tracy served as an IMF operative involved in four distinct missions throughout the course of season four, one of which spanned three episodes. While not designated as a regular IMF member, she is commonly acknowledged as a recurring figure due to her participation in four missions. Meriwether graced the screen as a Today Girl on NBC's The Today Show from 1955 to 1956. Her silver screen debut occurred in 1959, portraying Linda Davis in 4D Man, alongside Robert Lansing. Notable appearances include the Phil Silvers Show episode titled Cyrano de Bilco. In 1961, she made a guest appearance as Gloria in the episode Buddy and the Amazon on her former husband's Frank a Letter, one season CBS sitcom, Bringing Up Buddy. Meriwether continued to diversify her portfolio, delving into stage performances, television appearances, voiceover work for games, and roles in feature films. She made guest appearances on a variety of television shows, including Desperate Housewives, Hawaii Five Zero, The League, and Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. Recently, she reprised her role as Miss Hastings in the sequel's prequel to The Ultimate Gift, titled The Ultimate Life, 2013, under the direction of Michael Landon Jr. Additionally, she starred in the short film Kitty. Meriwether exchanged vows with Frank a letter on April 20, 1958. The couple welcomed two daughters, actresses Kyle a letter Oldham and Leslie A. a letter before divorcing in 1974. On September 21, 1986, Meriwether entered into marriage with Marshall Borden, Linda Day George as Lisa Casey. Lisa Casey served as the consistent female member of the IMF during seasons six and seven, stepping in as a replacement for Dana Lambert, who was exclusively present in season five. Apart from her adeptness in role-playing, she possessed a distinct talent for cosmetology, helping to bridge the gap left by the departure of the illustrious Paris at the conclusion of season five. Originally known by the name Linda Day, she initiated her career during the 1960s under the guidance of the Eileen Ford Modeling Agency, achieving prominence as a leading model in print and television commercials. Additionally, she graced the Broadway stage, starring in The Devils alongside Jason Robards and Anne Bancroft. Her initial encounter with actor Christopher George transpired during their tenure as models at the Eileen Ford Agency while she was still married to her first spouse. Their on-screen collaboration commenced with the 1966 independent film The Gentle Rain. It was during their work together on the 1970 John Wayne film Chisholm that their romantic relationship blossomed, culminating in marriage on May 15, 1970. Her first marriage to Joseph Pantano endured from 1963 to 1970, resulting in the birth of their son, Nikki. She dissolved her union with Pantano to wed Christopher George. Their marriage persisted from May 15, 1970, until his passing on November 28, 1983, and they welcomed a daughter named Casey. Legal proceedings were initiated to officially recognize Nikki Pantano as Christopher's biological child. In 1990, Linda George entered into her third marriage with actor and producer Doug Cronin, who succumbed to cancer on December 4, 2010. They resided in Los Angeles and Gardner, Washington, Sam Elliott as Doug Robert. Dr. Douglas Robert assumed a semi-regular position within the IMF, commencing his tenure with the third assignment of season five, titled The Innocent. Employing the surname Lang on multiple occasions as an alias with varying first names, Doug showcased not only his aptitude for role-playing, but also his extensive medical expertise and knowledge. 
During his inaugural mission with the team, he played a pivotal role in saving Barney Collier's life, averting potential fatality resulting from accidental poisoning by a biological weapon, underscoring the indispensability of having a medical specialist within the team. Elliot embarked on his professional journey as a character performer with his physical appearance, vocal timbre, and demeanor ideally suited for westerns. In 1969, he made his television debut portraying Dan Kenyon in Judd for the defense in the episode The Crystal Maze. Concurrently, he featured in an episode of Lancer titled Death Bait as Renslow. He continued to make appearances in two additional episodes of the series between 1970 and 1971. Notably, one of his early cinematic roles involved portraying a card player witnessing the Sundance Kid, Robert Redford, showcasing his marksmanship prowess in the opening sequence of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969. Elliot entered into matrimony with actress Catherine Ross in 1984, becoming her fifth spouse. They share a daughter named Cleo, who pursues a career as a musician in Malibu, California. Residing on a coastal ranch in Malibu, which they acquired in the 1970s, Ross and Elliot also maintain a residence in the Willamette Valley in Oregon. Following his mother's passing in 2012 at the age of 96, he assumed ownership of his childhood abode in northeast Portland. Barbara Bain as Cinnamon Carter Cinnamon Carter, known professionally as Bain, is a fashion model, actress, and a member of the IMF. Initially, Carter harbored concerns that her professional opportunities were influenced by her marriage to Martin Landau. However, she dispelled these doubts when she achieved the unprecedented feat of winning three consecutive Emmy Awards for Best Dramatic Actress. Unfortunately, Carter and Landau opted to depart from the show after season three due to unsuccessful salary negotiations compounded by DeSilu Studios' recent acquisition and budget constraints. Following the success of Mission Impossible, she revisited her character in a different ensemble cast, appearing in a 1997 episode of Diagnosis, Murder. Subsequently, she reunited with Landau in the television series Space, 1999. Barbara encountered Landau during their studies under Lee Strasberg at the Actors Studio. The duo exchanged vows in 1957 and remained together until 1993. Presently, Bain is 92 years old and continues to pursue her craft. In 2020, she featured in the Apple TV film On the Rocks, led by Bill Murray. When not engaged in professional endeavors, she opts not to view any of the mission. Impossible films featuring Tom Cruise, maintaining her stance as an original cast member, declining participation in Cruise's interpretation. It's indisputable that time inevitably influences each of us. But what remains significant is the enduring influence these gifted individuals have left on the annals of television. What recollections do you hold dear from the initial Mission Impossible series? How do you perceive the cast in their past and present forms? Let's continue the discussion. We appreciate your participation in this sentimental journey. Remember to give us a thumbs up, subscribe for additional content, and activate notifications to stay updated on our upcoming releases.